this is a 10 liter gas can. We can see here that it's equipped with a cap for the end. This is a safety valve. When you press it, that little puff of gas coming out is some of the lighter hydrocarbons dissolved in the gasoline. If we look on the side here, we can see the fluid level. It's demarcated, but it's hard to read. That's the 10 liter mark, around two and a half gallons. This is called a no spill model. It is the button that makes it easy to use. I'm gonna demonstrate that. This was proudly made in the USA. This is stable. This red fluid, if you read the instructions here, you add it to gasoline, and what it does is it treats, every one ounce treats up to two and a half gallons or 9.5 liters of fuel. You add it to fresh fuel and you keep the gas can mostly full to avoid condensation. You run the engine after you add it and what it does is it helps to prevent the gasoline from gumming up in carburetors. Now this motorcycle here, this Yamaha, is fuel injected, so that's not as much of a problem, but we don't drive it every day or ride it every day, so I put stable in this ethanol-free gas, and that enhances its shelf life. I also cycle the gas through this can regularly. Now I'm going to show you how I use this gas can to add gas to this motorcycle. First up, I'm going to show you how to use the Stabil can. This is kind of cool. This is a built-in measuring apparatus. I wish they did this with more products. You squeeze the bottom, and then it fills the top container like that. And then you pour that into your gas can. If you fill the top about like that, that's an ounce. That's enough to treat 9.5 liters or about two and a half gallons. On this motorcycle, as in many others, you can take the key from the ignition and stick it into the gas cap and twist it until it pops. Then lift the door like that. If we shake the bike a little bit, you can see it's already mostly full. When Meg and I took it out yesterday, we mostly tooled around at low speeds and not for very long, about an hour, so it didn't burn very much. But I'll demonstrate how to fill it anyways. You put this plastic knob down into this receiver hole down here. Now, if you can line it up, you can get the knob to go inside the hole like that. And then once the knob is in there, you press the button and gas starts flowing. Now it's not going to flow very much because it's already mostly full. When the gas hits the top, it stops flowing. All right, now looking up close, you can see a small metal bar down at the bottom right there. And if you swash the gas back and forth, you can see it turbulently go over the bar, distorting the image. That shows you that you're mostly full. You can top fill it a little bit more than that, though I wouldn't recommend it. To close it, you just go like that and then press down. When it latches all the way, it clicks and then remove your key and close the latch. That's it. That's how you fill a motorcycle using a gas can. Now that's a little bit easier than if you were to try to fill it at a gas station. This is a 2020 Yamaha MT-03. And in my personal opinion, it's about to be fun to ride. I think it's around 38 horsepower. It has a six speed sequential shifter. The information display is crisp and easy to read. We'll go ahead and fire it up. That unlocks the steering column, the first click to the right, and then like that. And we see on the information display that it's 6.18 a.m. 
we're averaging 55.6 miles per gallon. We're at 713 miles on this trip setting. There's 1,340 miles on this motorcycle. On the last trip that I reset, so we rode 16.9 miles yesterday, and there's actually 1,340.3 total miles. And those give, right here, this gives the instantaneous settings while you're riding. And you can see over here, there's a shift indicator and a shift light indicating that we're in neutral. And the oil pressure light and the ABS light don't go out until the motorcycle's turned on. If you want to hear what that sounds like, all you got to do is go like this. See the RPMs increase? We're going to turn that off because if we continue to run it, it would put carbon monoxide inside the garage and carbon monoxide is poisonous. It displaces oxygen in the bloodstream and would eventually cause you to lose consciousness and pass out. I park this up against the side of a garage here right next to a car and we keep it snugged over here so there's lots of clearance. I just cleaned the chain yesterday. I don't know if you can see it through here, but it's sparkling clean. I used chain wax, I'll show you. This is called a chain wax. Now let me zoom back out. I would say this is the best chain lubricant I've ever found. It's based on paraffin base oil and it's safe for O-ring chains. And it comes with a straw like that. And you can hear there's a shaker ball in there because you have to mix the wax into the solvent. Now before, I use that. I use this high performance Pro Honda chain cleaner. And what this is used for is to clean gunk, road debris, and funk out of the chain uh, before you uh, lubricate it. You can see here I added an attachment uh, so I can plug a battery tinder into the. Uh, 12 volt sealed lead acid battery while the bike is in storage. I ride it and fire it up in storage enough that that's not actually necessary all the time. But uh, lead acid batteries, including AGM, last a lot longer if you keep them fully charged. 13.26 uh, volts DC is the saturation or float charge. And um, I would highly advise never allowing a 12 volt battery. Uh, used for starting lighting or ignition to go below 12.5 volts as that causes sulfation of the anode and cathode, uh, whereby which the sulfuric acid in water mixture deposits sulfate crystals on the lead and lead oxide plates inside the battery, effectively destroying it. Well, there's a pro tip. Cheers. This is even better. <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> We have to take some cute pictures of, oh, I don't know where the picture of all the three dogs are. Are you taking a microphone?